Before we get started with the show, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Our first sponsor is Atmos Planning, financial planners turning visionaries into meaningful millionaires. Our second sponsor of the day is Planet Duct. Reach out to them for any of your air duct cleaning needs. Now, let's get on with the show. Welcome back to the COS Business Podcast, the number one podcast in Colorado Springs. My name is Andrew Hasley. I almost said Corey. <laughs> and I'm the host of the show. Today, I'm sitting here with Corey Arcaris with Colorado Enterprise Fund. So... It's great to have you on the show to, to really to promote what you guys are doing. Can you give us a little bit of information about what it is that uh, what th this fund is? Yes, thank you so much for having me. Um, the El Paso County has just rolled out a new grant fund of $10 million, and um, Colorado Enterprise Fund has been chosen as the entity to collect and score the applications for this fund. Um, we're pretty excited to do it. We did it in round one, and now we're here to do it again. Yeah, okay, sweet. Well, I can't wait to get into that more in this episode, but first we're going to roll the entry music and then we'll get started. Sure. This is a show where we have real conversations with entrepreneurs and business owners who are mostly in Colorado Springs doing things in the community of Colorado Springs. Yep, you got to hit number one for me. And boom. Awesome. And by the way, we have a special guest uh, switcher, camera switcher in the background. We got Chuck Bader in the background switching for us. He came in and... And really showed up. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, so so how did this get started? Uh, where where is you guys? This is your second time doing this, right? Right. Okay. Yes. And, and yeah, I guess we'll we'll go into that, and then we'll figure, and then we'll go down to to how people can apply and what who should. Sure. <laughs> um, El Paso County is very lucky to um, the economic development department um, is led by Crystal Latier, uh, who's our economic development director, and she is pretty amazing. Um, the first round went very very well. Um, we had over 50% of the applicants that were a minority women or veteran um, apply, and they initially had a lower pot of money, but they came out and they awarded over $14 million to small businesses in El Paso County. Okay. Um, this time, with the relief funds that have come, it's now $10 million, and they once again tapped Colorado Enterprise Fund um, to once again um, uh, uh, collect the applications and and score them, and then return it to them. Our application window is very, very short. Yes. And so I thank you so much, Andrew, yeah. for helping us get the word out, because we're only eight days away at this point. Um, Ju July 16th is our deadline at 5 p.m. Uh, to get all those applications in, and we're hoping that bi small business owners or all business owners in El Paso County will fill out an application and get that in. For sure, yeah, and... And there's no reason not to, to right. apply. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We learned a lot in round one. Mm -hmm. We streamlined the process quite a bit. Uh, the first thing we did it was we streamlined the amount of documents that you need to upload. You simply need your 2020 taxes, your 2019 taxes. Um, you had to have been in business um, uh, it, it, by 20, it, uh, December 31st, 2020. Okay. A, a lot of people started their businesses um, in, de in 2020. For sure. Yes. Yeah, a lot of pandemic businesses came came about. <laughs> Absolutely. And a lot of them were uh, cut off from uh, some of the help that came mm -hmm. through, the PPP uh uh, from the SBA, the EIDL, um, and so they didn't receive any of that help, but this fund does. Um, so uh, El Paso County, again, wants to help as many business owners as possible. Um, you have to upload your valid ID. You also have to upload your uh, certificate of good standing from the Colorado Secretary of State. Okay. Um, so uh, the, the document process has been streamlined quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so our reviewers are are making sure that uh, those documents are are uploaded and that uh, all all of it uh, goes as, as smoothly as possible. The application resides on the Colorado Enter Enterprise Fund dot org website and so much like last time we will review that and get it over to the county okay and and this is not a loan right no absolutely not it is a grant mm -hmm. that you do not have to pay back the application does ask it for you to disclose um uh, any PPP money that you received, any EIDL money that you received, but it will not preclude you for the amount that it will not um, bar you or they don't take that money mm -hmm. into account um, when they're calculating the amount, the grant money that they will calculate for you mm -hmm. for this grant. 
um, they, there's been questions um, from people already um, as far as um, when they were got in business. Um, I've had people ask about, um, uh, you know, it, it, does that affect me at all if I'm disclosing that money? And, and the answer is no. Okay. Um, if you have special circumstances, um, there is a, a free text box. You, you're going to want to explain your circumstances there. Um, if you had to file an extension, you're going to want to upload that documentation so that the reviewers can see that. Um, but there is places where you can uh, include your narrative um, in the application process. Okay, like, like your business journey? Your business journey, okay. absolutely. Like how um, it does ask you how has COVID nineteen negatively affected mm -hmm. your business, and you're going to want to explain that. Yeah, and I, 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 I can <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> most, I, 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 most businesses <laughs> can exactly, yeah, for sure, <laughs> because it did affect it. It sure did. Absolutely, it affected a lot of mm -hmm. people negatively. Yes. So, so one of my biggest questions, and it's probably more specific for me, mm -hmm. is because. I originally registered my business in Missouri because that's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. But the last two years, I've been running it out here. Mm -hmm. And I think it may even still be registered in Missouri. Would that affect me? Absolutely. You yeah. have to be registered in the state of Colorado. Okay, okay. So then, then I probably can't qualify. Right, <laughs> okay. right. It has, to be, it has to be registered in the state of Colorado. Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no worries. <laughs> um, one of the things I'll also um, mention is that, um, may, again, you have to make sure that you explain everything as concisely as you can, um, how COVID-19 negatively affected you mm -hmm. um, so that you can, so that the reviewers can, can um, uh, review that, but apply as early as you can mm -hmm. so that if the reviewers need to get back to you, um, they have time to do that. Don't mm -hmm. wait till the last minute. Um, you'll have to upload a W-9, and you uh, it, it needs to be signed. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's kind of one of the common problems we find is yeah. that... Um, and that takes time. So yeah, gotta... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we find that um, applicants upload a W-9, and they don't sign it. They fill it out, and they upload it, but it's not signed, mm. and therefore we can't accept it. So often we have to go back and say, hey, can you upload a signed W-9? Mm -hmm. And so make sure that all your documents are are you know uh, complete and signed and mm -hmm. uploaded accurately so do it as soon as you can does that take a, a scanner or, or does yes. it digital yeah, yeah. Uh, no work? if you can sign it scan it and upload it okay. that would be that would be best sweet i mm -hmm. think i have some digital signature yeah out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but if you can sign it and mm -hmm. upload it that would be that would be best okay sweet so what what's some of the uh some other major issues that you noticed the first round that 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 um, could have prevented someone or, or slowed them down or caused you guys these issues? Um, maybe not so much issues, but I would say that with this grant, um, one of the things I feel is very positive is with this grant, you can actually um, request, it, it asks you, what are you going to use the money for? Mm -hmm. And with this grant, you can actually ask um, for the money for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. um, with Under the PPP or EIDL, um, you really had to use that money for payroll or rent mm -hmm. or utilities. With this grant, you can actually say, I'm going to revamp my website. I'm going to use this for marketing mm -hmm. to bring customers back into yeah. my back into my business. I'm going to be using this so that people can know that I'm open again. And, you know, that's a great thing to be able to use this money for. Mm -hmm. And in a, it's a grant. You don't have to pay it back. And it's a good thing to be able to say, you know, I, I want people traction and I want business back in mm -hmm. my my establishment and so you, you can say that with this grant and I think that's very very positive because yeah. it's, it's forward looking yeah and I love that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with some of the other um, money it was for specific purposes and with this one you can outline a marketing plan and and some things like that mm -hmm. Well, sweet. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. That allows you to have more freedom in growing your business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You can put, uh, you know, things, some, some plans, some forward plans in place instead of just, I, I want to survive. Yeah, for right, sure. Right. So if someone wanted to, to apply, where, where do they, they go, go right now? They go to coloradoenterprisefund.org. 
Um, there's a drop down under resources, and the grant is under uh, the resources drop down. Under the resources drop down. That's okay. exactly where it, it is. Sweet. Yeah. And so, so I have another question that's for my other business, which is this podcast. Sure, absolutely. Uh, it's been around since uh, the end of 2019. Yes. But we didn't make it registered to a business until like February this year. Okay. Does that, does that affect us as well? It does. <laughs> okay. It does. You had to have been in business by December 31st, 2020. That mean, by that, by you, that means you had to be registered. Registered, okay. yes. We were in business, but yes. we didn't register until, and it took forever to get that, like, it took almost like two months to get that signed, so. Right. Because, like, they were overflowed with a lot of right. stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, and we should look at it. Um, mm-hmm. If you were receiving revenues from advertisers mm-hmm. um, under a trade name, um, and doing business as a sole proprietor, then we could definitely look at it. Okay. Um, if you have taxes that prove that you were, and you had maybe a business checking account, mm-hmm. we could look at it because you can do business as a sole proprietor under your social security number mm-hmm. in the state of Colorado. Okay. So um, uh, I would suggest that we take a look at it. Mm-hmm. And we can see if you qualify. For sure. All okay. right. Will do. All right. <laughs> so, so, so let's dive more into about about sure. you. Sure. And and who you are and what's your experience in business. Is. Sure. My experience. <laughs> so I um, am a uh, so I'm the Southern Colorado uh, lending officer for mm-hmm. Colorado Enterprise Fund. Um, I ha- I opened their Southern Colorado office in 2019. Um, so we're very happy to be here um, and doing very well. We've gained a lot of traction. Um, and uh, we recently took over the county's regional loan fund, okay. which we're very happy. If you are in an enterprise zone, then um, we do your loans. We have a black business loan fund. Okay. Um, we also have an ITIN loan fund. So if you're in the Latino community and your business is an ITIN number, we also do ITIN loan funds. What's ITIN? An ITIN is what your business has if you are um, uh, legally in the United States and are able to do a uh, business, then you get an ITIN. Okay. Um, and you start a business and you are able to do loans through us. Nice. Um, through the Colorado Enterprise Fund. Um, we also have a Valor Loan Fund for veterans. Okay. Um, and so we, we specialize in minority women and veterans. Um, so we have we have loans for all, all um, uh, folks. Um, if uh, we stand in the gap, I always like to explain mm-hmm. Colorado Enterprise Fund as the entity that stands in the gap for those startups and businesses that banks um, that are higher risks uh, that banks typically don't Mm -hmm. um, lend money to, either because their business is too new, mainly because their business is too new. Um, And then they borrow money from us, and then once they've gotten to that age where there may be, uh, what what I say in the toddler age, they're now now two to five years old, Mm -hmm. and they've gotten through that newbie period, Mm -hmm. And now they need more money, then we send them back to the banks. Okay. Right? It's funny because my newbie period yeah. happened during the pandemic. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So it was like a double whammy. Right, exactly. And that <laughs> happened to a lot of folks. Mm-hmm. And so we lend money to a lot of the new businesses, a lot of the startups. Mm-hmm. And then so banks actually refer a lot of people over to us. Banks are some of our yes. strongest referral partners. Okay. So we're, we work very well with banks. And because some of their best customers, their their customers on the consumer side, um, start businesses, but they can't lend them money on the business side. So they refer them to us. And then once we get them up and running after a couple of years, we send them back to the bank. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we're a nonprofit. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. I was going to ask you what, yeah. what is what is your business kind of classified? Yeah, like, we're a nonprofit. I want to know about what your business is. Yeah, and yeah, how, yeah. How you guys operate? Yeah, like. we're a nonprofit, okay. and we've been in existence for about forty six years. Okay. We're based out of Denver. Which is the Colorado Enterprise Fund. Yes, absolutely. And this is the Southern Colorado yeah, Bridge. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And so we've been around about 46 years. And we're we're here to, like, that's what I said, to stand in the gap, mm-hmm. to get Colorado business up and running, and then hand them back. Um, okay. Uh, and, and make sure they're solid. And, and, um, and so when the pandemic started, we kind of, uh, stopped lending to new businesses so that we made sure that our businesses that we had up and running made it through. 
Okay. Yeah. So that's that's For what sure. we did. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious about how how you guys stay afloat. Who who pays your guys' bills? So what happens is um, a lot of times we get funded. Uh, the l- money that comes to us mm-hmm. comes from the SBA mm-hmm. and banks. Okay, and, nice. <laughs> and so um, banks will, they have money they lend to us. Mm-hmm. So banks typically lend at around a 5 6%. Mm-hmm. They lend us money. We turn around and lend it out, and we lend out at a 7 or 8%. Okay. So we lend at a little bit of higher rate. Gotcha. Right? And then we handhold um our business owners, we give them a free copy of QuickBooks. We mm-hmm. teach them how to use it. You nice. Know, technical. Many of the, the lending officers have been business owners ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, we develop close relationships with our clients, things like that. And then once they grow um, and are ready, then, you know, then they go back to what we call bank money. Because okay, then yeah, yeah. we want them to borrow money at cheaper rates. For sure. Because it's good for their business. Mm-hmm. So and then you guys can be... Mm-hmm you guys can help them get to that level. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's our business model and why. And of our entire portfolio, we only have about 3% that default. Okay. Even though they're higher risk businesses. Wow, but you guys make them less higher risk. Right, (laughs) exactly, exactly. So you guys, it sounds like you guys do a lot of work that, uh, that like an SBA or uh, right. SBDC would do. Absolutely. And I'm a senior consultant at the SBDC. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I cannot say enough great things about Aikta and her team. They are so wonderful. And okay. in fact, tomorrow um, there is an all day session um, at the um, library in conjunction that, that the SBDC has set up for this fund for business owners to have set up 50 people are coming in have already signed up to come do their applications with our help okay uh, for the grant so the sbdc set that up for clients of the sbdc to come in and fill out their applications and so big props to Aikta and her team at the sbdc because once they found out this grant was available they, mm-hmm. they sent out um, the information to everyone that um, is an SBDC client and said, if you want assistance filling out this grant, we're going to set up a computer lab, you know, at the library, and there'll be assistance there for you to, to fill out the application. And I'll be one of the people helping. Okay, sweet. Yeah. yeah. So it pays to be an SBDC client. So yeah, they that's are awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Aitha and her team are amazing. So how does one become an SBDC client? You go out to pikespeaksbdc.com or .org, mm-hmm. I should know this, and there is a wealth of information. And what is uh, what are some reasons why someone would want to reach out to the SBDC? Um, they have free consulting mm-hmm. um, with business consultants like myself. Mm-hmm. Um, they can help you with all areas of your business, mm-hmm. whether it's finance and accounting, operations, human resources, or sales and marketing. Nice. I mean, it's all four of those areas. If you have not been to the SBDC, I'm going to tell you, you need to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because, yeah, um, there isn't an aspect of your business that they don't cover. For sure. Um, and most of the information's free. There's on-demand courses you can watch at home. Um, and they connect you to some of the best, most experienced people in the city. Mm, nice. All right. So, so... So say someone once is watching this and they got inspired, they want to start a business. What would be your personal advice to them? Start with the SBDC. Okay, yeah. yes, exactly. Because <laughs> then, then they got everything else. Absolutely, because you need, you need your financials. Mm-hmm. You need your projections. You need to know if you're going to make money at it. Mm-hmm. You need to know if you're planning a business or a hobby. For sure. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> and and, and that, that can help. help Absolutely. Plan, plan Absolutely. Yes. So, so... Before you got involved in the, in the Colorado Enterprise Fund, what, what what kind of business things were you doing? Um, I was a uh, I had my own business consulting agency, mm-hmm. um, and I um, ran a medical clinic in Southeast Colorado Springs. Okay, a primary care clinic in Southeast Colorado uh, Springs. And so you're a doctor? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a business consultant. Okay, but I. Um, but you had doctors. I had nurse practitioners, nurse and practitioners, I had, uh-huh, okay. and I had one doctor that was that oversaw them. Okay. And um, I had a primary care clinic in Southeast, and I sold it to Matthews Vu okay. in um, 2019. And we grew. We opened it in 2014, 
and I sold it in 2019 with uh, 5,000 patients. And oh, wow. Yeah, so you guys were doing good. We were doing well. <laughs> and still doing good. Probably. And I give so many kudos to Matthews Vu. They're a wonderful practice. They, they're um, Dr. Vu and Debbie Chandler, um, who's their CEO. They are amazing people. And nice. we should get them on the show. Yeah, you <laughs> definitely should. If you haven't had, yeah, I would invite you to bring Debbie Chandler. She used to be the head of Memorial Hospital. And, oh, wow. okay. and I would invite you to bring her on the show. Um, For sure. And they are doing more in Southeast. They're growing their practice in Southeast and nice. um, doing great things. Um, I, I would be happy to make an introduction and, yeah. and have her come sit. Um, with you and share yeah, if she's her, willing. Her, her vision i i would yes um awesome, absolutely <laughs> absolutely so so what got you into want to start a, a practice a medical practice not being a doctor i know <laughs> <laughs> um uh, my 55 year old brother died from complications with diabetes mm -hmm. and i kind of had all this grief he left me his life insurance money and uh, he was a truck driver for Walmart, and he left me his life insurance money, and I... What? Ha, 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 just, he, he just liked you? He, my brother. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I missed that part. I he, got distracted. He, I'm <laughs> sorry. He was single, and okay. he was a truck driver for Walmart, okay. and he left me his life insurance money. Mm, okay. And at the time, because I was a business consultant, I had helped a nurse practitioner open her own practice in another county. Mm -hmm. And... Um, she said, I know how to, I, you know, in, in our state, uh, nurse practitioners, practitioners has, have prescription authority um, so they can write prescriptions. And she said, I, I want to open my own practice, but I don't know the business side. I don't know how to negotiate a lease. I don't know how to do any of this, but I did. Okay. So I showed her how to do all that. And in, in doing that, I learned how to open a clinic. Nice. And so when my brother died, I decided I was going to open a clinic in Southeast because there was no primary care for 80,000 people in Southeast. Okay. And so I took his money and I opened a clinic in Southeast. That's awesome. Wow, and, that's great. <laughs> and so I, I took his money and that's what I did with it. Nice. And, 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 and it's been a good investment? It's been a wonderful investment <laughs> for a lot of people. Yes, that is so great. Yeah. And, and before, before that medical practice, what, what were you doing? Um, I was running my own business consulting agency. Mm -hmm. um, and before that, I was a vice president for the Colorado Springs Gazette. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting because... I, I knew Marcus should have been here. His mom's been working for the Gazette for like decades. Oh, really? Yeah. Who's his mom? Uh, I don't remember her name. <laughs> She's probably watching this too. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just met her on 4th of July. Actually. What's yeah. his last name? Uh, Alvarado. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. But yeah, yeah. And yeah, and yeah so, so that's why I don't know her name because I just met her. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's but funny. she said it was funny when, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I met her. Yeah. She's been watching the show and she felt like she had already already known me oh really <laughs> so, that's yeah. funny yeah no i was vice president for the gazette that's how i came to colorado springs wow, that's, yeah that's, i'm pretty sure that's why marcus and them came to colorado springs oh really that's i wish he would have been here because yeah. that would have been a great connection yeah that would have <laughs> been a great connection yeah. yeah and i i transitioned out in 2010 and i started my own business consulting agency that's and cool. that's when i started working with the sbdc and then um then I started the, the clinic in 2014. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then I sold it in 2019. And now you run the Colorado Springs Enterprise Fund. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And how did you get into that? You, you, you wanted to start? I was a client of theirs. Okay. Yeah. When I started the clinic, I needed a loan and mm -hmm. I went to the Colorado Enterprise Fund. Okay. Um, in addition to my brother's money, I needed extra funding. Yeah. And um, I went to the Colorado Enterprise Fund. And so when um, I closed the clinic, or when I sold the clinic, I paid off my loan, and I, they needed a Southern Colorado representative, and I asked if I could be their representative because okay. I in, I believed in what they did. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, you didn't just believe in it; you, I lived it. Yeah, you lived it I, exactly. So yeah, yeah. And that's so, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, sweet. So, so before we wrap this up, let's 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 plug the the, the fun and what people need to do Absolutely. that are watching this one more time. <laughs> Absolutely, please go apply for the um, for the county regional grant. It's up to twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You can go to the Colorado Enterprise Fund dot org website. Under resources is the grant. Um, 
I, I, do I need to look at the camera? Yeah, you can, yeah. You can hold that at the camera if you want. Oh, okay. Just yeah. hold it up like that. Okay, right oh. here. <laughs> okay, right here. It might here. not be in focus, so, so right. hold it close to your face. Okay. <laughs> All right, right here. Okay. Yeah. Um, the applications are due July 16th. Uh, so we only have a few days left. Please go have your 2020 and your 2019 taxes ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, you'll need your Colorado Secretary of State um, ready to go also, a valid ID. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have to explain anything, please do it in the text box. Um, and if you have any questions, you can email us too. The email is there. Um, I encourage you to do it as soon as possible so we have time to email you back should we have any questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you for this yeah. platform and for what you do for Colorado Springs businesses and giving them an opportunity um, to, to you know, promote themselves. We, yeah. we truly appreciate it. For sure. And, you know, yeah. it really helps people get to know them on a more personal level, I yeah. think, too. Yeah. And apparently I've gotten this a lot, so I'm not trying to brag, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but apparently I'm easy to talk to. You are so <laughs> easy to talk to. I can't believe I just came and spilled everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you coming yeah, on the yeah, show. Yeah, people are like, you've done all that. And I'm yeah. like, God, I'm tired now when I say it all. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> a, a couple of months ago, I was watching a bunch of like criminal interrogations. Uh -huh. And I was like, this could be good for the podcast. Because it could, because if, yeah. if you learn about some of the techniques that these FBI agents right. learn, what they do is they get people to feel comfortable. That's their, right. That's their secret sauce, essentially. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, so, learning some of these techniques and, right. and how, how to just get people to spill their beans. Right, right. <laughs> I started talking about stuff I haven't talked about in forever. <laughs> that's so awesome. <laughs> well, I appreciate you Thank coming you. on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. having me. Yeah. I appreciate it so much. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> hey, this has been the Colorado Springs Business Podcast. Podcast, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you. All right. Okay, I'm going to do these for you. Yes.